All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am joined by Terry Duhon, who is all the way over in the UK in London. How are you doing, Terry? Sunny, sunny London today. Sunny A rare event. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, guys, uh, London's always beautiful in the sunshine, actually. So it's uh, summers are nice there. And uh, Terry is non-executive chair of Morgan Stanley Investment Management Limited on the board of Morgan Stanley International. Uh, and you also, um, I mean, on the board of Rathbone Wealth Management. But one of the things that I like about your bio when I read through your bio is you have down here, you have this note on your bio, which I think everybody should put on there. As you say, this short bio is misleading without also hearing about the highs and lows along the way. And uh, and it is funny because normally when you read people's bios, you know, they, they don't have that. And what we're going to talk about today ties into that. We're going to talk about reinvention, the future of success. So, Terry, how much has reinvention, number one, played a part in your career success? It, it, it's been the foundation of my career, actually. And, and, and it's, been, it's been what's made me successful, actually, um, and what's made me more confident, interestingly, right? I, um, I was not one of those people who had a very clear dream of where I was going. And we all know those people. And, we're, you know, when I was young, when I was at MIT, I was so envious of these people. They had such clarity on where they were going, you know, and I just thought, God, I'm such a loser. I'm lost. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what job I'm getting. I barely knew what I was going to study kind of thing. And um, ultimately, what I figured out is you just have to take steps forward, right? And once you take steps forward, you can then really and, and look straight out of university everything's a learning experience because you really know nothing but once you get that first learning experience you then start to think okay so what am i learning here what am i getting out of this and where can i go and um ultimately look i i started at jp morgan on the trading floor i was in um on wall street and what i learned about myself is that it takes me about eight years to be bored to tears and then it takes me about two years to figure out what's next so I have these 10 year chunks, you know, so my first 10 years was, was the trading floor. And then my next 10 years, I decided I was going to be an entrepreneur, which is a huge leap when you go from, you know, one of thousands of people mm -hmm. yeah. in a big organization, right? You're going to build your own thing. Um, and then I, uh, and then I decided to sit on boards. I decided to write a book, um, how the trading floor really works. I can tell you that if you have nothing else to do on a Friday night, it's a huge way to put yourself to sleep. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> bestseller, like 50 shades of gray and, um, as exciting, I think, um, I, uh, you know, I'm an associate fellow at Oxford. I, um, I, I have a lot of fun, right? I do some lecturing, I do some presenting and, um, at the moment, you know, I'm on my third career. I don't know what the fourth is going to look like yet, but, um, but, you know, look, I reinventing myself along the way, all these, all these times makes me think I can do it again. Right. Yeah. And, and, no. again, and Absol absolutely. And I think, I mean, just going back to what you mentioned earlier. Yeah. I mean, I can remember from being in college, like having friends who were studying medicine because they wanted to be doctors or because they wanted to be attorneys. And yeah, it was great. You're, you're thinking, wow, you've got your whole life planned out. Whereas I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm heading to the bar. Um, so, uh, and I think then that people often, you know, default into careers and all of that kind of stuff, which is fine. But I think the reinvention piece is sometimes it, people it holds people back from reinventing themselves because they're worried about the perception of the circle maybe they're in today or the expectations they think other people have of them you know I, yes i think that's absolutely right and and you know part of part of the, the biggest learning i had was leaving big corporate just walking away. And, and I, I walked away from what many people said was an amazing job. And I said, yeah, it might be an amazing job, but it's actually not amazing for me. And mm -hmm. to be fair, to be fair, um, you know, I, I'd love to say that I was incredibly brave and I, I had, you know, I had vision and I knew exactly where I was going. The, the truth is actually that first step for me was prompted by, um, you know, some big life changing events. So my, my mama passed away and um, I had my first baby and they kind of happened within months of each other. And it was, 
such a shock for me, like physically, mentally, emotionally, everything. And I just remember waking up one day and thinking, you know, I am so unhappy with where I am. I really have inside me this dream to be an entrepreneur. Why am I not just giving myself that opportunity? Why am I not letting myself do that? You know, shame on me not to let myself do that. And, um, and you know, life is short and anything can happen. Mm -hmm. and, and to be fair, what's interesting today is that the pandemic has made people think something similarly. You know, they're, they're sitting yeah. there thinking, hang on, you know, th there's a lot of angst, there's a lot of anxiety, there's, there's a lot of concern, uncertainty about the, about the future. And people are suddenly thinking, hang on, I better be doing what I enjoy, actually. I should give myself permission to do that. And, um, and it's scary, right? It really is scary. But it becomes actually less scary each time. Because, you know, the truth is, yeah, people are, you know, people are going to laugh. People might not believe in you. You know, you might not initially believe in yourself, but, but you know, you use your community, right? Because we're not, your path is your own, but, but you're not alone. And, you know, I just phoned a friend. I call, I spoke to my husband, you know, it was just use all your resources to help prop you up and then you can do anything. Yeah, and I think then if you if if you look around your community or you discover that maybe they're not as supportive as you would expect them or as you'd like them to be, perhaps you have to question the community that you've surrounded yourself with, and yeah, uh, and oh maybe no, that's no. maybe maybe that's part of your reinvention is to is to move on a little bit. Yes. So so what I would say is that you know there are lots of well-meaning people out there, right? Mm. And and. and you know, you generally have to think that when people are giving you advice, they're actually really well-meaning. And what you have to do, though, is you step back and you say, okay, that's one perspective. Let me get another one and another, one. you know, like you wouldn't just take mm -hmm. one doctor's, sure. you know, analysis, you, you know, in the U.S., particularly, you always get a second opinion, you know, but actually when it's, when it's your career, you can get a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth. In fact, you can get a hundred different opinions. You know, you can really, really understand how people see you, how you want to position yourself. You can think it through and you can develop it over time and become more confident so that actually when you speak to those people who said you couldn't do it, they see something different suddenly. You know, you eventually trans, you, you cause you're not a function of your past. If you can sh project your future potential, right? Mm -hmm. The people around you will want to support you too. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. I'm glad you raised that about you're not a function of your past, because I do think, uh, unfortunately, um, we often look at the past and say that that is the predictor of everything in the future, or that is who you are, or whatever. And, and it's completely the opposite. We're supposed to evolve. Yeah, look, it's what we do in finance, right? We always look at the past and think it's, it tells us about the future. That's what, how we do all of our analysis. And then we tell our clients, we say, the past is no predictor of the future, but that's all we know how to do, right? And, and the funny thing is actually, you know, when I, when I talk to people, I always say, look, when you, you know, the, the first step to reinvention is to dream big, right? Well, why not? Why wouldn't you just, just why not? What's the point of being alive if you can't at least give yourself the opportunity to dream? Right. And then, you know, on that, don't think, don't hinder that dream by where you are today. Don't don't think that anything just literally, where do you want to be? And then work, work backwards. How can you get there? You know, so I I there I was I had been on the trading floor for 10 years. I had been an entrepreneur. I had um, worked with some charities and I decided I wanted to sit on a board and, you know, the literally my first conversations were, were laughter, just outright disbelief. How, what could I possibly bring to the boardroom? Um, you know, I know you're totally, you're too young. You have no experience to bring to the table. Um, it was, uh, oh, and the classic was, well, you've not worked on a board, so you can't get on a board. And I was like, you do realize how ridiculous, <laughs> how stupid that is. And so, you know, so that was my dream. But if I had listened to the first bits of my conversation and let that restrict me, I'd have never gotten there. So I had to think, okay, if I want to sit on a board, what step do I do before that? And then what step before that? And then how do I just get myself there? And how do I demonstrate that I am credible in this space? Um, and you've just got to figure that out. And you use your, again, you use your community to help reach out, ask people to support you and give you advice. And 
you'll always get there. Yeah, I, I love what you said about the steps, because that's the other part, I think that we as humans, we're very good at this, right? You know, so if, if you can persuade somebody like dream big, set a big goal, and they go, okay, I've dreamed big, I've set a big goal. And then they look at the goal, and they think, wow, that's so far away, that they get paralyzed by not even taking the first step when, as we know, every journey, I mean, it's one foot in front of the other, but it's that first step seems to be so difficult a lot of the time. Yeah, it is. And and look, I mean, I think the, the key is to remember that this goes back to what I wrote in my bio, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to tell their successes. So you ask someone, what's your background? And, you know, if you just ask me, it's, oh, MIT, JP mm -hmm. Morgan, entrepreneur sitting on the board of Morgan Stanley, Oxford, literally, you don't actually see the day that I burst into tears <laughs> when someone else said no, you don't see the day I was fired. You don't see the day that, you know, I just, I, I, I fumbled the interview and it was so awful. You know, you don't see the day that, you know, I started a business and it failed and I lost a bunch of money. You don't see all of that in my bio, right? Cause that's not, that's not what I'm, you know, that's not what we're conditioned to talk about. But actually, if we all talked about those things, it, the truth is, for the, the vast majority of people would suddenly become real. And what they've achieved would become achievable by every single one of us, right? And, you know, I mean, you, you need to be, you want people to think they can do it. You know, that's yeah. the point. And, and, and you actually, by always talking about the successes, people think that's the only thing that matters. And then they're afraid of failure right? Failure is your best opportunity to learn. You know, J.M. Barry has this fabulous quote. He's the author of Peter Pan. He says, we're all failures. At least the best of us are. <laughs> That's great. I mean, how fabulous is that? At least the yeah. best of us are, in which case we got to get out there <laughs> yeah. take the risk and fail. Yeah, a, a, a colleague, a, a former colleague of mine ha had a friend. He said he had two things hanging in his office wall. One was his his business, um, his MBA from Harvard, and the other was his chapter 11 from the first bankruptcy of his first business. And he would always tell people, guess which one I learned more from? <laughs> I like that. I say to people, the best, your best opportunity to learn is failure. And in fact, I, I generally say as well that if you haven't failed, and maybe this is because I want everybody to, to fail along with me, you know, but if you haven't failed, you haven't tried hard enough and you haven't taken enough risk and you're not reaching your potential because you just, you learn so much, right? You learn so yeah. much. No, I, I, I totally agree. Especially you look back on things that didn't go well or things, maybe businesses you started or invested in things and you lost money. I mean, you spend a lot of time afterwards going through your head thinking, what could I have done differently? What could I have done? And you're so much better equipped going forward because you then work, because you can see it. You can, it really, yeah. uh, and it's a great motivation, particularly if you lost money on some things, a fantastic <laughs> motivation <laughs> to go figure out what you did wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I, you know, look, I, 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 with hindsight, you know, in my, when I was an entrepreneur, I wish I had taken more risk. Um, you know, there were some initiatives I wanted to do right at the credit crisis and all my clients were banks. And, mm. and I just thought, oh my goodness, this is probably the not, not the right time to, to do it. I should just wait and see. But of course, you know, as a trader, I also knew I didn't apply that, you know, I, as a trader, you buy low and you sell high, that's kind of your job. And, um, and I, and I hadn't crossed that concept over into my entrepreneurial space. And I was trying to be a bit more, I was more conservative and I, I, you know, I still want to put myself on the naughty step for what, a, you know, a, like what a mistake that was, but you learn, you know, you learn. Live yeah, no, there. and I think, and I think, I think it's critical, and that's why I think uh, that uh, if there's anything good coming out of this pandemic, it is the opportunity for, for some self-reflection. Because the other thing you you mentioned back there that I just wanted to come back on, we 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 believe in the hype of overnight success or instant success, right? Because that's what's being pumped at us all the time now. And to your point, we don't see even the overnight successes. We don't see the years and years of of, of failure or the years and years of, of of struggle that they went through, and and we believe and therefore and we only see this overnight success thing. And I think that is unfortunately a, it has set expectations differently for people. Yeah, I mean, look, I think. You know, there's, I think there's a lot of, um, 
I think there's a lot of marketing out there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of branding that is a little bit that that it, that looks a bit misleading. And it's I don't think it's the individuals themselves. You know, I think the you know, there's a lot of media and there's just kind of a lot of excitement when you see something new and you just don't think about what got them to that point. Um, but actually, you know, the the other thing is we do have an instant gratification. Yep. You, you know, we, we've, our attention spans are shorter. I mean, my attention span is sh shorter. Um, you know, I'm, I just want to read the headline and flip to the next article and, you know, and just, you know, flip to the next article. And, and I find myself, you know, struggling sometimes, like I want to read the synopsis of the book and I just can't get through the whole thing. And I just think, my goodness, Terry, you know, <laughs> what's happened to you? And, um, and, you know, the, the fact is that most of us, almost all of us have the ability to, 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 to work hard and put in the time and get there, right? And, and the cleverer you are and the more you use the people around you, you can move faster for sure. But, you know, I, the value I got was in the journey as opposed to, you know, as opposed to the destination. Although, although to be fair, I always, you know, I see myself as on a continuous journey because I'm, I'm going to reinvent myself. You know, the next board will be new. It'll be different. It'll be, and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that. So actually it's, it's always part of the journey. You know, it's all part of the journey. Yeah. And I think that's the important thing for people to, to remember is that the journey is the important part. And yes, it's great when you get to the destination, but the journey is going to, is going to teach you a lot. And the other thing that I always think, uh, I always say to people that, uh, you know, when you start out on a path, you, you always assume the path is leading to a destination, but sometimes it's just leading to other paths that lead to destinations. And therefore not to always, not to always say, well, I arrived here, this is my destination. Well, no, it's maybe, maybe could be just a stopping off point. Well, you know, so it's funny because I, I sort of think as our paths is iterative, you know, we just kind of, we iterate along the way and we constantly take in feedback and we note that the world is changing around us. And then we kind of, we, we take that on board and it has an impact on where we're going and, and, and we, we, you know, and we just keep iterating forward and, and, um, you know, the, the, we're apparently going to live to be a hundred and people are move <laughs> and people are and people are moving jobs more frequently you know mm -hmm. nobody's in one place forever so the expectation is that you know people are increasingly moving through every three to five years and you know one of the things I say to my my students at university is the job you get when you first get out of university may not exist in five years time and the job you're doing in five years time may not exist today and so actually you know, it, it has to be a journey or else you're, you know, you're not on a, any path at all unless you see it as, as a journey and you recognize that, you know, you have to be a lifelong learner. You have to be constantly taking things on board and, um, and looking forward and thinking, look, what can I do next? Because it's all changing around me. That's, and you know, that some people, if you look at it as scary, then you, you could not, you could never take a step forward. But if you think, oh, if I if I look at it, I could I can make opportunity out of this, right? There's change. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to put myself on the path that I want to be, rather than the world moving around me and pushing me in place. In which case, then it's my journey, you know, yeah. ownership. Ownership, absolutely. Uh, ownership and personal accountability, absolutely. I think the other the other part too is I think. It's not good. It's not good looking back for evidence of why you're not going to succeed. But sometimes it's it's I, I've done this with other people sometimes when they're like trying to do something and they're saying, but I'm not sure if I can or whatever. I'll say, well, let's look back on the journey you've come so far. And when you go, when you take them back through it, they suddenly go, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, well, I am more capable. Yeah, I did survive that. I did overcome that. I am. And they actually get amazed by their own by their own journey and their own story that they never considered that there's evidence that they can overcome many different things. Look, you're so right. I mean, I, I suffer from um, imposter syndrome. So yeah. any time, literally any time, you know, I put myself out there, I put myself on the path of opportunity, opportunity comes knocking and I say, oh my God, I can't do this. And I, you know, I remember once I was, I had just, I'm just on the board of Morgan Stanley and, um, you know, six months in and the chair gave me a call completely out of the blue. And I thought, oh, 
that's it. I'm, I'm going to be fired. You know, I mean, he thinks I'm horrific and this is awful. And I was just, I was panicked. So I said, hi, you know, this is, and he said, yeah, listen, we just think you're doing such a good job. We would like you to chair the risk committee. And I was like, oh, hang on. This is not the phone call I thought I was going to have, you know? I, and I said, I'm going to have to think about that. So I, you know, I spoke to my husband and I said, um, they want me to chair the risk committee. Do you think, do you think, I, I mean, I'm not sure I can do this. I mean, I've never done it before. And he was like, well, Terry, hang on. Can, can you do it? Have you seen people do it? Can you just, can you do what you've seen? And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes, I can. You know, like I had to get myself, but I needed some help, right? That's why I always say you have to have your community to help you along the way. Because on my own, I would be a mess, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And then just and and uh, and through your community and yourself, just look for the evidence that to that that's there that shows you that you can you can apply yourself to anything that you really want to. And I think that's and I think that's a great uh, hopefully a lot of people have done that during the pandemic. Hopefully they have reflected on their lives and they've seen that they have talents, they have achievements, they have things that they've done that really is a predictor that they can really go forward and do whatever they want from here on in. Yeah, you know, I, I will say that, you know, I've given a number of talks about the topic of reinvention, and I always start with a bit of a wellness message, which is, um, if, if change is not your natural state, um, it takes energy to change, and it takes, it takes a lot of thought. And, you know, the pandemic, I actually haven't found it that easy, personally, you know, the homeschooling, the, the, the uncertainty, the, the um, you know, everything around it has been a little bit of a challenge for me, you know, and I've, I've looked on, on online and I've seen all these people saying things like, oh, I'm going to learn, you know, um, to speak Mandarin and how exciting I'm going to reorganize my closet and I'm going to do all these amazing, I'm going to write a book and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, God, I, I'm going to sit in the corner over here and eat a bag of Doritos while my kids run around like hooligans in the house because I want to cry. <laughs> so I always start by saying, look, you know what, this is this month, this time might prompt you to do something different. This time you might be thinking this is the right time because you've got, you have to, but if you're not in the right headspace, it's okay to give yourself a break, right? It's totally okay. Cause there's, there's still going to be time. And once you're in the right headspace, cause it takes some energy and it takes, mm -hmm. you have to want to believe in yourself. You can't be in the corner eating Doritos, you know? So <laughs> You know, you have to think you can you can manage. So you you know, it's okay to give yourself a break. And then when you're ready, absolutely pick it up and off you go. And and the truth is, you can achieve anything if you just don't give up. Anything is possible. It's that's the exciting thing about being human. Yeah, no, it is. And I always go back. Uh, if you don't give up, I always go back to uh, you know Chuck Norris, the uh, the movie and martial arts guy. When it, when he he works with the um, he has his charity and he works with underprivileged kids and all that, but he always tells people before they're, when they're about to give up, he, he always says to them, um, how would you feel if this was the last obstacle before your success and you gave up? If somebody came to you later and said, this was the final obstacle and you quit just before the final obstacle, how would you feel? And they're like, oh, I wouldn't feel very good. So I continue. So that's he always does whenever that's keep going because you just never know the next obstacle, maybe the last one. Well, and you know, again, I, there were times when, you know, I was trying to get to the boardroom and all I heard was no. And I, I remember it was like a rainy day. It was horrible. I had another no. And I just, I just, I, I phoned a friend and, and I was like, look, I'm, am I even on the right journey? Am I, what am I doing? I'm wasting my time, aren't I? And she said, absolutely not. You're going to do that. You know, you're going to do this. You're going to get there. So even in those you know, even in those really difficult points to the journey when you can't see the end, even if it is the last obstacle before the mm -hmm. next, you know, you need someone else as well to kind of help you remember that you can do it, you know, that you can keep going forward, that it is the right path for you. Absolutely. Well, listen, Terry, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, all of Terry's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we're still talking about me. So I mm -hmm. look, I, I sit on boards um, today and I chair risk committees. 
um, of big financial institutions, which basically means I don't do a lot. In fact, my official title is non-executive director. So what it means is that the executives run, run the business and I get to sit there in the boardroom and say, well, why'd you do that? How did you do that? Are there any gaps? I get to be the really annoying and irritating oversight over the business. Um, but I chair the risk committees and that's a lot of fun. Um, because it, again, it means I'm sitting there trying to think through, you know, what the risk looks like in the business and not to try and stop us from having any risk because you have to take risk to have mm -hmm. a business. Yeah. Um, and particularly in finance, our job is actually to take risk. So, um, you know, I, the question is, do we understand the risk or not? And so that's what we spend time on in the risk committee. Um, but those aren't full time, right? We talk about sitting on boards in terms of the number of days that you spend. So I'll spend 40 days on this board or 80 days on that board. And then I lecture at um, Oxford University where I'm an associate fellow. And I lecture on fun stuff like FinTech and um, women in finance or um, trading strategies or, um, Asset management, you know, really wildly exciting things that I, I hope some of you are interested in. Um, and uh, and then I'm thinking of writing another book. So there you go. Excellent. Excellent. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time today and all your great insights. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.